Welcome back. You know, most of the time when people call me a cloying sycophant, they're pretty much right, although I prefer the term born fan. But in this case, as I make this introduction of my next guest and call him a national comedy treasure, I'm not exaggerating in the least. After all, with films like There's Something About Mary, Dumb and Dumber, and of course Dumb and Dumber 2, I'm very pleased to welcome to the stage a fellow who has written great, great comedy, but also is in town this year at Sundance doing good works on behalf of the Shriners Hospitals and SAG-AFTRA, coming up a panel on increasing opportunities for disabled actors in Hollywood. This is Peter Farrelly. How are you? Good. Thank you very much. Welcome. Nice it's intro. really a pleasure to meet you. It's great being here. Loving it. And My first time ever at, uh, at, at Sundance. At I, Sundance. I was surprised to hear that. Yeah. I've been to Park City a few times, which is an you know, incredible town. And uh, I've skied here. I've been here in the summer. and uh, But I, I never came for the for the festival. And uh, it's, it's fun. Fun being here. Well, it's, it, I'm super excited that you included Park City television on your first Ooh. Sundance yeah. trip. Well, thanks for having me. We're, you know, we're trying to get the word out about Shriners, and it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, as you know, an amazing place. Indeed, and and we've been very fortunate. I, I had a chance to sit down with R.J. Mitty, with mm. Walter White Jr., and yeah. of course there were a few very excited photo ops while R.J. was here, and we're going to chat with uh, J.R. Martinez and Amy Purdy, who yeah. I think are also Fred, on the yeah, panel. Yeah, they're on the so panel tomorrow afternoon. Excellent. Uh, let's start off with the business end of things. Talk about your participation in this panel and talk about your, your feelings, your philosophy, and, and kind of what the industry is like in the year 2015 in terms of opportunities for uh, non-traditional actors maybe or, yeah. or actors with disabilities. Right. Uh, it, well, it's never been easy. It's never been easy for actors with disabilities, uh, and it is the doors seem to be opening, but they're not opening fast. You know, uh, we were blessed in the, in growing up in that we had people with disabilities around us. We had two friends who had an intellectual disabilities, or at the time they would called be called mentally retarded. Right. Uh, and uh, and we also had a friend in a wheelchair who, who was a quadriplegic, and this was part of our group. You know, uh, so. Uh, like we'd be playing ice hockey with the you know the you know the the intellectually dis disabled guys. They were older but good guys, and we all hung. So when we started making movies, we weren't making a statement about by putting people with in, uh, disabilities into our movies. It was just part of our world, and it seemed unnatural not to have people with disabilities because that's not the way the world is. You know, 10% of the country is uh, disabled in some way, and and to see a movie where you go two hours and you never see a person with a disability to me is fake. Indeed, and, and RJ spoke similarly to uh, his experience before uh, becoming a professional actor and the fact that this opportunity to have a conversation in the midst of the largest film festival in the world, yeah. arguably, is is a really great opportunity to try and draw some people in to, to change some perceptions. And I think by the same token, we're seeing more representations not enough, but but it seems we're going in the right direction. Yeah, it is. Things are changing, and um, and they will change. Uh, they will get there. But uh, it's like you know, there's a uh, and uh, there's a um, th th when I was. 25 years ago, there was this uh, uh, joke we used to do. It was a riddle, and and the riddle was, uh, you probably heard it by the way, and it was years ago, and it was father and son driving in his car, and they are uh, they have an accident. Two ambulances come. One ambulance takes the father to one hospital. One ambulance takes the son to another hospital. When the the son gets to the hospital, the doctor comes out, looks at him, and says, "Oh my God, that's my son." And the question was, how could that be? And people would be like, mm, "Is it his step?" father? No. Was he adopted? Is it this? Is it that? It's like, well, no, the doctor was his mother. But when you know what he thinks of that. Nobody, Amazing. at that point, doctor, you thought man, nurse, woman, right? And I actually, I went to graduate school, Columbia University. I'm not bragging. I'm saying it because I actually did that riddle at Columbia at one of the best schools in the country and no one got it. No one, they were like sitting there, which he, which his, his step was the father, it's his, his mother. And people were like, oh my <laughs> oh, God, what is wrong with us? That's embarrassing. So I did that uh, recently, uh, my daughter, when she was about, my daughter's 14 now, when she was probably like eight, 
I did that riddle to my daughter and she said, I don't get it. I said, who's the, who's the doctor? How can that be? How can the doctor be, uh, how can she, the doctor said, that's my son. And she said, that's his mother. And she was baffled by the thing because in her world, doctors can be women or men. She was not raised thinking doctor, man, nurse, woman. And that's what we have to do with uh, casting people in movies. Just as if, if it says girlfriend enters the room, we have to get casting agents to see past white girlfriend. Category. Yeah, and, and also uh, uh, able-bodied. Like, how about open up your brain? That could be, that girlfriend that walks in the room could be anybody. She could be in a wheel, or, or she could be blind, she could be deaf, she could be in a wheelchair, she could be black, white, Asian, you know, Absolutely. Uh, that's what we have to do. And we have to get people thinking uh, differently. And it starts with the casting agents. And once they start pulling in people, uh, you know, uh, all different kinds of people, then we're going to get, you know, we're, it's, the doors are going to open for people with disabilities. And it's going to be a real movie with real people and a real world. And accessing a category in which there's a lot of talent, a great Absolutely. deal of talent that's being underutilized. Yeah, and by the way, you know, there was a, I was on a panel a few years ago uh, with David Milch, and he said something that got, kind of got gasps, it was uh, from the audience, uh, and, uh, but he, he was, he was saying it from a good place, and what he said was, uh, it was a it was a panel about disability uh, in the in the in film, and he said, you know, it wouldn't kill you to get better as actors, mm. and people were like, <laughs> and but uh, there was some truth in what he was saying, and it's this: is that when when disabled actors don't get the opportunity to work, how can they get better? And that's true. There's, uh, there's, it's true. It's like, the flip side. it's a, it's a, it's a catch twenty two. Like, uh, there are some actors out there with disabilities who are incredible, incredible actors, and they're not getting their opportunities. And then there are others that aren't getting the chance to develop because they're not getting seen at all. And what we have to do is get people in the door. And then what's going to happen is it's going to snowball because also people with disabilities aren't thinking about becoming actors because they're thinking, who? They oh, I can't no, do that. They have no role models. Right. They have right. no role models. They are until very recently with you know R.J. Mitty and guys like that. Uh, they didn't think it was doable. And once they realize, oh, hey, these doors are opening up. The, it's going to maybe that part of my consciousness and my dream yeah. is possible. I had the same conversation just yesterday with my friend Matthew Perkins, who made a film about a, a fellow who's a little person who wanted to play the Tin Man. Yeah. Little Tin Man. Why, why does the Tin Man have to be over 5'9"? Right. Yeah, there's, there's no, no reason. reason whatsoever. There's absolutely zero reason that would have to be that way. But it is, you know, it's just about getting over, you know, stereotypes of what you're thinking, you know, thinking. And it is changing, it, thank God. But uh, we're just trying to get it going quicker. Indeed. So uh, what are you working on these days? What's, what's funny to Pete <laughs> Farrelly in 2015? Um... Well, uh, I'm doing a thing uh, right now. We're developing uh, a couple things. A thing at Amazon, uh, and I'm also doing something um, called Ricky Stanicki, which is uh, a movie about uh, these kids who uh, invent a uh, fictional. When they get in trouble, they somebody breaks a window. They say, "Who broke the window?" He's Ricky Stanicki. You know, they make up a name. They keep blaming everything on this guy, Ricky Stanicki. Teenagers, they get caught drinking. Where'd you get the booze? Ricky Stanicki bought the booze. Like, I don't want you hanging around with Stanicki. That's right. Now they're married. Uh, they have girlfriends married, that kind of thing, and they still are using Stanicki. They're like, "Honey, Stanicki's having a fundraiser in New Orleans. We got to go to for the hurricane." Victims. I'll be in so yeah, and then they go to <laughs> they go to uh, Vegas, you know, and sure. he's their go-to lie, and they actually keep a Bible every time they tell a Ricky Stinicky lie, they write it down so they don't forget, and at one point. Uh, things get a little muddled. Yeah, I think that might be a little difficult after a certain period of well, uh, certain volume. Happens, <laughs> something happens when they're gone that's not good, and the wives flip out and they say, "We want to meet Stinicky. How come Stinicky wasn't at your wedding?" And he's like, "Well, he's such a good friend." Yeah, well, he's working in Africa with the kids. You know that. You know, and they have all sorts of excuses, and the wives put the hammer down. And they say, "We want to meet Stinicky," and so they have to hire a you guy to, to be Ricky Stinicky. They hire a guy. They train him with the Bible and. That's 
that's <laughs> the movie and it gets really crazy. Sounds like Fun. probably a good jumping off point for yeah. a lot of bits. Yeah, this was a good Very time. Very cool. Well, I wish I was Charlie Rose. We'd sit here and talk Couldn't for go another forever. hour. But, uh, it's good gotta, to be back in town because this is, of course, where we shot a lot of the original Dumb and Dumber. Indeed. And uh, and uh, you were saying something beforehand about the, the Sev. The Sev, yeah, yes. Um, down, in, down in Heber City, Utah. Yeah. And, and almost 20 years later, yeah. the Sev is, is virtually indistinguishable from its, its appearance in the film Dumb Well, I was going to tell uh, the audience, because uh, I didn't know what the Sev was, but that's the 7-Eleven, right? Yes. Now, is that well known in, in these parts? I guess it must be a Utah thing. I don't really? remember living in L.A. and using yeah. the phrase Sev. Yeah. But, but that was the scene where Jim Carrey walks in, and he, uh, the two guys are standing there, and they're like, you know, hey, big gulp. Hey, like, well, see you later. You know, they go <laughs> in. And the funny part, that the thing that always cracks me up about that was those two guys were actually standing there drinking big gulps. They were just... Yeah, guys watching us film and when he was walking in he didn't have anything to do and I said guys you guys get over here and we signed him up they got a hundred bucks or whatever you get to be an extra sure and I said Jim on the way in just say anything to these guys and Jim Carrey being Jim Carrey just you know was winging it and uh, came up with that and it always cracks me up because I always wondered do those guys even know they're in the movie you know <laughs> those two guys right and, and on some I'm, level that that's the perfect yeah. person that you want to be in, in yeah. your movie is somebody who's not conscious of any no. of Oh, they were just big. standing there with those actual big gulps watching us shoot. And I, hey, get in here. Get in here. <laughs> anyway, so. Well, have a wonderful panel. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for your efforts on behalf of the disabled community. And it's a real treat to get to meet you and chat a little bit. Hopefully, we'll see you again in Park City. Maybe we'll take some turns later on in the spring or uh, hang out and, and get some high west. Well, th uh, it was a pleasure meeting you. And I do also want to say that, you know, Shriners has been supporting this entire thing, Sh Shriners Hospitals. Yes, yes, indeed. And they're a uh, beautiful organization, one of the greatest in the in the world. And uh, that's why I'm here. And also because R.J. Mitty asked me to come, and I'm a huge uh, Mitty fan. So uh, uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. And also a little bit of love to the folks from SAG-AFTRA who are also uh, hosting the panel. Oh. Uh, great. All the best, brother. Be fairly, everybody. Thank what you. a thrill. We'll be right back after this.